Hello there and welcome to our crash course or tour of the Kinder Care WordPress theme. First of all, thanks so much for purchasing our, our WordPress theme. We're quite proud of it. I think it's, it's got so many awesome features that you're really going to enjoy it. Um, and so we thought we'd do a tour to show you how we would typically go and set up the theme because there's a lot of different angles that you can approach it from. We're going to try to show you the, uh, the most thorough and quickest route. And so this video is hopefully going to catch all of that. It's not a substitute for our documentation. Our documentation goes into detail about, you know, the different fields, configuration fields, and, you know, how you go and do each individual step. We're going to sort of go over the overarching theme of, you know, how you go and modify the website. So first, we've just finished installing. We're going to hit continue. Now, what it's going to take us to is this initialization tab, and you can always come back to this if you wish. If you have an existing site already set up, these features here are probably going to be already showing a, a, a green button with a check mark that says you've got 10 pages already or you've got 25 posts or whatnot. We're going to go and initialize these just so that we have an example site to go with. Okay, So uh, I'm going to hit the uh, create sample pages and this particular feature um, to initialize can take upwards of a minute or so depending upon if you're running it uh, on localhost or if you're running it on a, a fast production server. Um, I've seen it run as, as much as a minute or as little as 10 seconds. All right, so that step is completed. I'm going to go and uh, initialize the sample posts. Um, that's just going to take a few seconds as well. Once we're done that, we just go through each of these items and initialize. If you have an existing system, you're going to have the first couple already probably get showing you you're in the green there. The widgets are going to need to be initialized as will the contact forms and all the rest of this down here. All right. And as we get to the bottom here, we're going to see that there's support for some custom post types. Now, we wanted to develop a theme that would give you a website that wasn't just a blog, but also had what was typically found in a website. You know, you might have frequently asked questions, um, quotes from your, your clientele, you know, who's on your team, as well as, you know, maybe some other pictures that you want to show off in a portfolio. So we've gone and provided support for this, but it's not something you typically include in a WordPress theme, but we want you to have a really awesome looking and functioning website. So in order to do that, we have to go and um, provide that functionality in a subsequent plugin. Now I had just previously uh, gone and installed this um, this plugin and we're actually just going to activate it. Basically whatever you see up here it says hey activate or install you just follow those steps. Okay, So we're just going to activate this one here and it's included in your package and all you're going to have to do is just follow the steps either hit the install or the activate button. And as you see here all of these items have already been installed and we have some uh, custom post types which can, we can initialize. I'm just going to take you back to where I would go, which is going to the theme framework, and then I can click on the initialization button. And we're just going to activate these, create some sample FAQs. And of course, you can always go and delete this information once you've got your site set up. But it's always nice to take a look if you're um, you know, working on this site and it's going to take you a couple days to really get um, it put together. It's nice to see some sample data. All right, and then the last one. And now there's one other plugin as well that I, I want to show you. All right, the plugin, and we're just going to go back here to the welcome page. You're going to see this little nag here, and you can clear it out anytime you like, but we are including some sort of a recommendation of plugins that we, we think you probably want to have in your WordPress theme or in your WordPress site, I should say. WordPress SEO, it's great for SEO. It's, it's probably the best that there is out there. It's free. WordFence, fantastic plugin for trying to stop people from breaking into your website. Updraft, that's, <laughs> you want to be making regular backups of your WordPress site. This is how you do it. And, uh, can uh, alleviate a lot of headache in the event that you go, oh my goodness, everything has fallen down around me. I want to restore to something from back last week. You really ought to take a look at that. The events calendar, if you want to be running a calendar as well. Um, we've developed a little plugin where it adds um, a sort of a bit of a history to your uh, pages from you know when you go to edit your pages. It shows you your most recent uh, pages that you edited there. And of course, we are also providing uh, in this theme 
uh, comes the license to use the layer slider. And then you probably saw that in the online demo, is the fancy slider up in the top of the home page. Um, really awesome looking. You can take what we've done and modify it. Um, now you just take a look at the instructions uh, for the layer slider from the developer there. Um, but it's it's not very difficult at all to add your own slides, your own pictures. You can even just keep the pictures that we have in there, maybe change your own words if you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and install that. So the layer slider, it's it's already included within the package. This needs to be installed and then activated. And because of the um, how we've got things set up here with what are called layouts, that uh, layer slider just needs to be initialized. Okay, so we're going to go to the layer slider, and we're going to why don't we go and do this here? We're going to go import sliders. So basically, you want to navigate to where you've downloaded or installed your WordPress theme to the Kinder Care one, and uh, go into the includes folder, and then there's a, a plugins folder. You're going to find here a uh, layer slider export kinder care we're going to double click that and we're going to hit import okay there you go it's set up that's all you had to do if you want to go and edit it uh, you can go and uh, you know basically click on um, i think it's just this link here and you can click on it and it changes okay um, but now we're going to go take a look at how the website looks so here we are there's the layer slider loading up in all its glory uh, we've got some cinematic features. We're going to have it slide in, slide out, show sort of an example of how the layer slider would look in here, and uh, and it just continues on. Now you don't need this this layer slider here if you don't want it. Um, certainly, it runs a the page runs a lot uh, smoother if we don't have a whole lot of movement going on. Um, so maybe just for the purpose of of this uh, little tour here, I'm going to disable it uh, just to show you all the other features that are awesome within the uh, KinderCare theme. All right, so here we are. Uh, I've disabled that slider really quickly, and I'll show you how to go and enable it and disable it in the future. But these are the core features of how the Kinder Care system looks. You know, we've got some clouds that load in here, and then as we scroll down, we've got some parallaxing effects in the background. You're going to see that we've got um, a number of um, different regions that zoom in and zoom out. And you probably saw this in the online demo. And um, you know, clouds that load and, and the sun that comes up. And of course, you got your footer down at the bottom of the page. The website is set up so that it's pretty much ready to roll and you can add your own content here. Okay. Um, and you can disable a number of these features or, or add to them as you see fit. But we wanted you to have a, uh, a, you know, a good foundation for you to, you know, jump off of. Or maybe that's a bad analogy, but you know, to build upon, okay? Uh, have a jumping off point, so to speak. And uh, so let's just go and see where would we go from here and, and understanding how the pages are put together, okay? So first things first, you've done the initialization here. The next thing you wanna do is go through the control panel. So I'm just gonna briefly go over this. We've got the quick start thing. If all you do is go through here to make sure that everything is set up just fine, that's great. I'm just gonna, briefly to discuss this. The basics are the basics. You know, it's the name of the website, the administrator email address, and your tagline. You can change it if you like, however you want to do it. Uh, the default pages. So um, it's a good idea to, you know, choose what page is going to be the home page, what page is going to be the blog page, the team members page, the FAQs page. This is important for when we have sub pages. So like when we click on a team member that is using the right layout for um, the team member profile. Same with the FAQ to show you the individual FAQ rather than the FAQ summary page. So we want to make sure that we, we have a reference to what is the FAQ page. Same thing goes for portfolio items and the search results. It's sometimes by default, um, the search results will use the blog layout, but if you want to use something that is specific, maybe trimmed down, maybe doesn't have all the stuff that um, shows up on a blog page, then you can uh, choose that page there as well. We've got some global settings. We have layout settings. And um, and then once you've done that, that's pretty much the basics to you know, start messing around with the rest of the site. When you start getting into a little bit more detail, you might want to go take a look at your look and feel. Now, one of the awesome hallmark features of the KinderCare um, WordPress theme is that we have the ability to add timed skins. So we saw you know, the WordPress, or sorry, the, uh, the homepage here, and it is using our countryside um, skin okay and we have also included different 
skins. We've got the undersea, the mountainscape, and the schoolyard. And you probably saw that in the layer slider. We had shown a couple screenshots of each of the different you know styles. And uh, in the online demo, we probably had a, a page for each one of those. And there's even a day and night version for each one. Why? Well, <laughs> why not? Um, I said to our designer, I said, hey, it'd be kind of cool if, you know, we had a day and night version. And then we could add a timed mechanism so that um, at nighttime, the website looks like it's nighttime. And then during the day, you know, it looks like it's in the day. So you can actually add a timed skin. And there are instructions in the in the documentation on how to go about setting up, you know, a, a nighttime and a daytime. And you can even set it up for um, daily, something that happens daily, such as, you know, a nighttime, daytime sort of thing, or date range. Um, so, so maybe during the month of, you know, October, you want to have a countryside, or by default, you want to have a countryside, but maybe down the road, uh, maybe in, say, January, you want to use the under, underwater theme because your, your preschool is doing underwater stuff. Okay, and all it does is it changes the background and the layers and that sort of thing. Okay, one of the other awesome things is we can disable and enable the layers. So we've got top clouds. We even have something here that's not shown here in, the, in this particular demo is is uh, our bubbles and bubbles. You know, that animate up. Um, the more layers you put on in here, uh, the slower the page is to scroll. It's up to you how much or how little you want to do. Um, and whether or not you want it animated or static. And uh, so you play with it however you like. Um, and you can, of course, also, depending upon um, which skin, you know, you could have a country daytime for, you know, 9 to 3 and have bubbles enabled. And for the rest of it, you can maybe only have the sunshine enabled, however you want to do it. Uh, we also have look and feel for changing some of the, the font styles and that sort of thing. Generally speaking, you're not going to need to touch that because it's all going to look great just by default. Branding. This is where you go and you can choose, say, an, an, if you want to use a, a, an, like a vector icon instead of a graphic logo, you can choose, choose to do that. Um, textual logo, that's where we say, you know, just the, the website name, Kinder Care, as we've shown it. And uh, a tagline. You can use the default site name, or you can specify something, um, something else. Okay, something custom. Uh, a logo link. You can choose to have your your graphic logo link back to the home page, or if you want it to to link to somewhere else, you can specify that as well. Okay. Graphic logo. We have got support here for Retina graphic. You know, for people that are using uh, some. Uh, Apple related devices um, for desktop websites all you're going to really need is that but um, so that we've got support for that as well we also have support for favorite icons or fave icons um, and you can just go google the web how to go and make a fave icon based upon your uh, your um, logo social networks you know we've, we've got support for I think up, upwards of 20 of them or so uh, you can punch in uh, your particular um, a profile page for each one of those and once you do that it's then available through the social media uh, shortcuts widget which we'll go through in a little bit custom code if you want to throw in some override code this is where you go to do it you know analytics code or something before the head or something before the body there are also plugins that go and do this we've uh, you know include that as part of the, the theme uh, you can also throw in some uh, overriding uh, CSS code here if you want to external assets Hey, if you want to have some sort of music in the background, SoundCloud is awesome for that. And, uh, you know, we've got it disabled here by default. But you can go and turn it on if you want. It's there if you need it. Font Awesome. Yes, we provide support for Font Awesome. That means that you can, you know, take advantage of the Font Awesome icons. Um, we have given the option to um, have things load via CDN, if you wish, or Content Delivery Network. Or you can use the ones that are included in your package um, via um, the 4. Point, I think it's 4.4 is what it currently is at, or you can grab the latest one via the content delivery network, and basically load it externally. Sometimes that's faster. Footer, you know, we've got some copyright in here by default. You know, we've we've just thrown in some boilerplate. You know, uh, this is designed by so and so. You can go and change that if you wish, or if you want to give us credit, by all means, please leave the link in there. You don't have to though. It's your website. You can do with it as you wish. The 404 page. 
pretty straightforward. You know, if somebody punches in uh, yourwebsite.com slash X, and that page doesn't exist, well, you need to be able to have something where they can, you know, have a message saying, hey, <laughs> we haven't got what you're looking for, but maybe try one of these resources. And so we can show, you know, your list of pages, uh, your old posts, maybe some recent posts. Okay. Um, and then, of course, we've got in sort of an instructions tab. Basically, we just give you a link to our forums and learning center, and you can go and take a look there. We also have a change log. Um, this particular framework that we have built that we're including with the KinderCare theme, uh, we've had in you know in development and production for you know probably two years, I would say. Uh, there's been a lot of changes to it. Um, we've actually been developing WordPress themes for, whew, I would say, probably five or six years, and in, over that course, uh, we are now on version four of our framework. Anyways, if you want to take a look at the change log. Maybe there's some updates that have come along recently um, or bug fixes. You can take a look at it there. And, of course, a tab for support. Hey, if you need support, for some reason something's broken uh, or you have a suggestion, by all means, we'd love to hear. So we've got a couple links there for you. So that's the basic framework, okay? That's, that's the global settings. Let's move on. So one of the key features of the WordPress theme framework is the layout editor. So you can probably think about this, that you know you can have a page and it can be uh, set up as, say, the primary layout. That would be the home page. But you might have, say, an FAQs page, an About Us page, a Sitemap page, page, and they all use sort of a minimized look, so a small header. And that's what we've got here. We've got sort of a default layout, and it uses eight, there are 18 pages that are associated with it. There's only one photo slideshow in this particular example. There might be two pages here associated with the minimized two-column right. That's what that means, 2R. Two-column left is here. And, uh, and so we've got these different layouts. You can create more. You can copy ones that are here by clicking on a Copy button. You can change the default layout from, from this one to something different. Maybe you want to make a copy of it and call it minimized two or minimize extra or whatever and make that the default. And what the default layout does is say you have a, a plugin such as the events calendar or some other thing that generates full page uh, sort of display, the default layout is what is going to kick in when um, th that needs to be displayed. It's often used by a number of other different um, situations like, you know, like pages that uh, such as, like I said, FAQs and About Us, bas basically something where you're not going to have a full uh, slider up at the top, and maybe you would, you know, you want to have a sidebar on the right-hand side or not. That's what the two-column layouts are for here. Uh, but that's, you know, that, that's what we've set up here. We also have set up uh, three different contact layouts. There's a uh, one column, a two column with the sidebar on the left, a two column with the sidebar on the right, um, and this is basically a jumping off point for you to, to go and mess around with. There is a handy little feature here that if you've messed with it so much, you could actually go and install and revert the default layouts. But when you do that, <laughs> you're, really, you're really reverting. Okay, so be careful about that. But it's probably a good idea if you're just playing around with it, you know, and you want to revert back, you can go and do that. So we spoke about uh, there being more than one page associated with the layout, such as the minimized layout here. Let's go take a look, first of all, at our at the pages. So the home page. The home page uses the primary layout, right? It also uses the default page type. And we cover this in our, our documentation, but there's different page types that you could associate it with. Uh, so your blog page usually, usually runs a, a minimized layout such as this but you would choose the blog content type. So you, when you do that, um, the settings down below here will change. So default will have a, a content region. Blog won't because all the content is pulled from posts. But you can choose the style that you want for the blog. Rows or sort of like a, a timeline or a, a masonry uh, style layout. You can also choose how you want the information to be displayed what sort of metadata that you want displayed and how you want it displayed. And depending upon, you know, FAQs has a very simple uh, extra settings page. Yeah, do you want the FAQs to be displayed within this page or lower down in the page or accordion style? So you can play with that. Team members, pretty straightforward, but do you want them displayed in a static, you know, gallery 
or do you want them to just be displayed in an isotope portfolio where things animate when you click on the, the categories that the, the staff members might be in. And then the sitemap uh, page type, pretty simple. Again, it's do you want to show like the pages, archives, or recent posts, just much like the, uh, the 404 page. All right. And then there's two more page types that are not listed under the general, and that is the ones that are included for the contact layout, where you have a map. And you can choose up to, I think we've oh, six map markers. So you can choose the location. So you just type in the, uh, the address, as much information as possible, such as, you know, you know, one, two, three, our street in our town, in our state, in our country, whatever it might be. And then you can give it a label. And you can actually use HTML text here just to maybe bold it up or even uh, give yourself a new line. So this might be uh, first line and then second line here. And this might be one, two, three, my street, uh, any town, state, go say, something like that. And uh, the way that the, the map uh, rendering tool is set up is that it's going to find that location. It's going to drop a marker right on the map. And you're probably going to see that in the example demo. It looks pretty awesome. Okay. So so that's the map. And that's for the, the contact page layout. So contact 2R, contact 2L, or just the contact layout. And then there's one other, and that is the photo slideshow. And of course, this is a very special layout in that it uh, really only has one page type available. And that is so that you can display uh, your uh, photo gallery. Okay. Now, of course, the homepage wasn't originally set up for this. We do have instructions and documentation to go through how to, you know, set up your slideshow. Please go through that, and it'll show you, you know, specifically what you need to do. But in this general sort of look on things, this is how you go about managing your pages. Okay. So it was set up as the primary layout by default, and so this is the content that shows in the in the content region widget as we we display things. In order to have things maybe one, two, three columns, uh, we had to create a widget that would actually specifically be placed within the page, and I'll show you that right here. We've got a content region widget. This is a full column content region widget, okay? And so that is where the, the content itself. Below that is going to be a focal box widget, and above that is going to be an HTML box widget and an info box slider, okay? So uh, all of this is sort of laid out. If we were to take a look at this, um, let's go take it. This is the info box widget. This is the HTML box, and then we've got our content area here below that, and then a focal box, okay? Different pages will have... Um, things divided out differently. So, for example, you might have a content region widget that is maybe three quarters of the page and then a sidebar on the right hand side. And you're going to see that already set up with our minimized two column layouts with the sidebar on the left or the sidebar on the right, and also the contact page. We've already got them preset that up. But you can go and make your own layouts as well and add that particular thing. Again, in the documentation, it goes into a little bit more detail about how you go about doing that. And um, so that's where the content that you define in here, this is the rich text editor, that's where it's going to go, okay? You also have the ability to override the theme. Now this is actually just really more for our purposes for demos, so that we can show on one page it's going to be the, uh, the countryside, or the default, or the mountainscape. You know, you probably won't be having one page as the countryside and one page as the undersea. It's there if you need to, or you can even go and change the, the, the layers that are involved there. You're also going to see here that there are page header titles. Now, what is this all about? Well, there are some really awesome SEO-specific plugins, such as uh, WordPress SEO. Okay? They do a very good job of taking a look at what is in your content and optimizing your page titles and your keywords and your metadata titles. If you don't have that, already installed. This allows for some very basic stuff. So basically your page title and your page description. You can even go in so far as to have an H3 and an H4 tag. Um, it is very important to have that sort of information on your page and often you don't have that in your um, in your content regions. You usually just type away and type what you want in there. Um, WordPress SEO does a good job of trying to prompt you to put that information in there. This is another option for you if you want to add in your on-page header tags. And you're going to find that uh, in this particular layout, do we have any? doesn't look like we do. But there is a widget that is available that takes advantage of that 
and I believe we have it on a number of the minimized page layouts. It's there if you want to define it. Okay. So there we go. We have a page, and we had, we went and we saw the layouts. So there's one page uh, is assigned to a layout, but you can have m many different pages assigned to a single layout. Okay. So let's go take a look at our layout editor once more. So we have our our uh, our layouts here, and when you're working around in these layouts, you can decide that, you know, I just created a page and it's called such and such. I want to go and apply this layout to it. And you can go and do that. You can enable it and hit save changes and instantly that page is now using this layout. So you don't even need to go back to the pages view, edit the page and choose the layout. It will actually just, you know, make that change right there for you. All right, moving along past the layout editor, we're going to go into the contact forms. Now, there are a lot of great uh, form plugins out there, but we wanted to have something that looked like we wanted it to look. And sometimes it's hard to configure uh, third-party plugins to look good for a theme. So we wanted it to look good for a theme that is going to look good in our themes. Uh, there are limitations. So if you find that there are some features that we don't have included in our contact forms, by all means, go take a look at contact seven, I think it is, or uh, contact form seven. There's there's a number of great you know plugins out there, but you can go and edit the forms that we uh, have included here by default, and um, and just play around with them, and you're going to find that um, they provide all the functionality that you saw in the online demo and you can go in and work with them and add your own fields. You can manage how the, f the fields are laid out just by going here, uh, adding additional fields. Uh, we give support for a number of different um, uh, form types. Uh, I think probably the only thing that we don't provide support for is our file uploads. So if you want to do file uploads, you, you have to look to another plugin, but you know, it really gives all the features that you're probably going to need. Focal box. Now, focal box. What is a focal box? Basically, it's a call to action. Okay. So, a focal box. We give a, an example one. It's right on the home page. That's him right there. So, you have one picture on zoom in. There he is, and he's looking at you. And then he's zooming away using a different picture. And it's a it's a component that our designer uh, dreamt up. And uh, so. He said, all right, I really want to do this. So the default is to have the image on the left. You could have the image on the right if you want, or image centered with no text. You can choose your three images here. It will automatically transition for you. You can choose your text fields, what you want it to say. And you can use this as, a again, another jumping off point to go and put your own text in there. Okay. There is, uh, if you wanted to, so much as to put a short code into one page, maybe you don't want to add it as a widget, put it into a content region, you can use that short code there. And of course, always make sure you save your changes. There is another mechanism here. Um, and if you hit delete, there should be a little button. Seems to be missing. I'm going to go check that out once I'm done this video to go and revert. Okay, active backgrounds. What is an active background? Well, we include an example map background. You can go and edit it. You can go in add your own. But what an active background is, is basically it's something that goes behind some content and uh, does something really awesome. It's active, okay? So this is a um, one where we're going to center on New York City, okay? And we're, there's a number of different things you can um, colorize. I'm not going to go through it all. You're going to want to take a look at the documentation for that, but suffice to say, it's going to change things. So I'm just going to go and show you here. This feature we tend to have behind this form. So let's go and change that, all right? So we're going to go to the, the layout manager, the layout editor. We're going to go to the primary layout. We're going to go down to that contact form. We're going to go and say, hey, I want to use the example map background as my style. We go back up and we save. OK, we're going to reload this now and see what happens. Ooh, look at that. Now we've got a map in the background of New York. How cool is that? And we could even change the colors if we want to of, of, of the water or even sort of the landmass. Really awesome. I encourage you to try it out. Let's just maybe make one small change there. Maybe we'll change the color of the water. Maybe what we're going to do here is we're just going to go and make it uh, maybe some, some darker blue. Actually, you know what? Let's just make it 
something like a burgundy, okay? We're going to hit changes, save the changes, and just like that, we reload. There we go. Obviously, that color combination doesn't work very well with this theme, but you can go and change it however you like. But another example of an active background, let me get out of here, is uh, to use a an image in the background. So we're going to use example image background. Okay, so uh, we're going to display only when content exists. You could actually have it as a placeholder that it always displays. We're going to use an image. Are we going to use any parallaxing? Yeah, why don't we? Why don't we uh, use some parallaxing so that it scrolls by when we scroll? Um, fading, fade in and out. I don't, I'm not going to use any fading on this example, and I'm not going to use any border, but we're going to choose to uh, or upload an image. So we're going to see what is already in our library. I'm going to use this image here, okay? And we just hit select. We hit save changes. And again, just like before, we're going to go back to our layout editor. We're going to go choose the primary layout. We're going to go back to that where that contact form was. And we're going to choose, let's just show it here, the example image background. Okay. We're going to hit save changes again. All right, so bye-bye map, and then hello, foggy shoreline. As you can see here, if you're noticing, the image is parallaxing. It's changing its position within the container. So it just adds a little bit of extra spice. Um, and of course, it, some images look better uh, using that parallax. Some look better using the other parallax method. There's also a horizontal um, parallaxing if you want to go left to right that's a really weird one if you want to try that out but we give you the option to go and do that reveal I think is is my favorite let's just go and try that out okay so this is reveal so when, as we're scrolling down it's revealing the image hmm, might not work as well with this particular image but it depends on whether or not your focus is on the bottom or if it's on the top of the image okay all right let's move along so, and then the last um, special function is the co or the content panel. What is a content panel? Content panel is like a tab panel or a an accordion content panel. And it's really easy to go and add your own content in here. Um, it's much like the forms where you can have a description and even a title. Your content panels are here. You can add as many content panels as you like. Though keep in mind, you know, if you're running tabs, you probably only want to have six or seven tabs across. Um, and the label is the tab label. And... Um, and then, of course, you can choose its type, either tabs or pills or accordions. Moving along here, we have these different custom post types that we now support with that uh, framework extension. Quotations. When do we use quotations? We use quotations in the Quotator um, plugin that usually appears on the home page. Usually all that focus stuff is on the home page. Um, let's see, do we have that one active? Let's take a look here. It's usually just above here. There it is. That's the quotator right there. And so it uh, scrolls back and forth just like that, what our clients say. So you can go and add additional quotes. You can put them into categories if you wish. It's a custom post type and dig right into there. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the FAQs, frequently asked questions. It's a good idea to have them on your website so that you know people get the questions or answers to the questions without having to call you up. How do you get them to your page? Will you have an FAQ? page type. You saw that earlier when we went to edit our pages, uh, just selecting the page type. When you do that, all the FAQs show up on your page. Team members, again, hey, did we not see any team members just a couple minutes ago? Right here, meet our teachers. And so this is where we have this isotope portfolio, and uh, you can have some additional information about, you know, maybe the Twitter account, F uh, Facebook, maybe you might not talk to your teacher on Facebook, who knows. Um, and if they're in administration or in the preschool section or toddler and infant, uh, gives a really great way of showcasing your staff. And again, you can add as many as you like and put them into as many categories as you like. Portfolio is just like the team members, but maybe not quite so specific. Uh, where do we go here? Portfolio is sort of the grand category look on things, and portfolio items is the individual. So again, you can go and uh, you know, show pictures of your uh, kids or of your different um, locations if that's what you want to do. It's up to you. So that's more or less a, a look on the different aspects of the theme and the features that are included. 
what we recommend is that if you're doing a brand new site, you know, take a look at what we've gone and done for you. Maybe keep some of the pages that we've created for you. Delete the ones you don't want. You know, we're probably going to have some some one column, some example pages in here. You can always add as many pages as you like, create as many layouts as you like, and um, and configure them however you like. One other thing that we really didn't go into that I really want to actually share with you is the let's go back over here, the layout editor. So I'm going to create, or actually I'm just going to go to the the minimized layout here. And so we've got ourselves the minimize header, which is the page header title one that I was mentioning earlier I didn't see on the home page. We also have a breadcrumb. We also have main content. But if you notice down here, the footer region actually, because it's a complex widget, has multiple columns, it actually uses the side footer sidebar. Now you can choose to add um, rows to each layout that are sidebars. And you can go and reference, like on the home page, there's five different regions that are, they go down the page, they're actually one or two column layouts, uh, sidebars, and you can add, and you can create as many sidebars as you like, and you can add them to your pages. You can have any configuration of widgets in them, and they'll be displayed within this region. So I might say, hey, I want to have uh, home one placed here, which is an HTML box widget. Is that going to work for me? Home two, uh, that might work for me as well. How about home three? That's an info box slider. So it gives you some more dynamic uh, ability to put whatever widgets you want um, within the page. So uh, we've included uh, the ability to um, add sidebars, as many sidebars as you like. You can manage those by changing their names or deleting them. And then you can go and manage what's in those sidebars by going to the widget control panel. So some of our more advanced widgets that we include, and we've got probably 20 widgets, and you'll see them all denoted by a little sunshine here. Some of the more advanced ones are not available in the layout manager, the layout editor. The ones that you see uh, provided with an asterisk here, they are available in the layout manager. Some of the, as I said, some of the more complex ones, such as the HTML box, uh, it's just, there's so much to it that at this point we haven't got you know, s support for them. Um, but you can go and, um, you know, add them to a sidebar and then add a sidebar to the layout manager. And that pretty much covers most of the features that we've included in this version of KinderCare. We hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you have any suggestions or if you do run into any problems, um, you can check out our, our forums or you can shoot us an email. Thanks so much for listening.